Good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Welcome everyone to God in the Midst radio broadcast, Get em Radio. I am your host for this Sunday School Lesson Edition, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. Praise God. It is good to be on this morning, this beautiful morning. Many of us are experiencing cold and a lot of just cold, cold weather. But here in, in Harvest and Huntsville area, the sun is shining. You can see it a little bit on the side of my face here. Oh, I just love a day like this. Cold and crisp day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, grab your Bibles. We're going to get into our Sunday school lesson this morning. Our Sunday school lesson comes from Daniel, the third chapter. Daniel, the third chapter. So grab your Bibles. Uh, the title of today's lesson is A Bold Faith. A Bold Faith. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, for your darling son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior who died on the cross for our sins. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, the one who signs, seals, and delivers us until the day of redemption. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you are and everything that you do, Lord. We, we give you praise right now. All glory and honor belongs to you. We thank you this day, Lord. And now, Lord, we just ask you to just have your way with us this day. Bless this technology of, of internet and Facebook and blog talk radio, Lord, just bless as only you can. Bless the, the get them radio ministry, Lord. Bless the head, Apostle Barbara Kizzy, the Heavenly Father, and bless everyone that comes upon this line to speak and those that come to listen. We plead the blood of Jesus, the Heavenly Father, over all of us in the name of Jesus. Watch over us, keep us, Lord. Strengthen us, encourage us, Lord. Have your way with us. Mold us and shape us according to your will and your way. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading today comes from um, Daniel chapter uh, 3. And I have, I think, verse 3. I mean, verse 19 queued up, uh, and I'm going to play uh, from the uh, Bible Gateway NIV dramatized version of chapter 3. Hey, man, let us, let us listen. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. 
Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, <laughs> Look, I see four men walking yeah. around in the fire, yeah. unbound yeah. and unharmed, <laughs> and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm. servants of the Most High God, come out! Come here! So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Anyway. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, <laughs> Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. <laughs> they trusted in him and defied the king's yeah, command yeah. and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble for no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Amen, amen. We actually started I think at verse 13 and then read all the way to verse 30. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a wonderful story. Many of us are quite familiar with this story. We we have studied it in Sunday school as a child. And we've heard preachers preaching it. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful story. And today, the way we're going to approach it, we're going to deal with it from a bold faith. A bold faith. Our key verse is verse 28. And uh, verse 28 reads, Nebuchadnezzar uh, spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angels and delivered his servants who trusted in him and, and have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our key concept for today is, is we should be bold and stand up for what we believe in. We should be bold and stand up for what we believe in. Our keys for kids, I always like to break the lesson down so that anyone who, who is, is, is young, children who's listening uh, at this time and a later time or even even those who are new into the faith, these are my keys for kids. Only the Lord, number one, should be worshipped. Only the Lord should be worshipped. We must worship the Lord. And then number two, sometimes our faith is tested. Sometimes our faith is tested. Our faith gets tested just like we get tested in school. Our faith sometimes are, is tested. And number three, we should trust God to always be with us. Oh, hallelujah. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So we should always trust God to be there right with us. Oh, hallelujah. So that's our keys for kids. And then for, for those who, who, are, who, who are more mature in the faith and, and they want to get down to the, to, to the theological nitty gritty of the word. Well, our lesson facts that we're going to be looking at today is to summarize the deliverance of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from death as it relates to Nebuchadnezzar's reaction to their deliverance. And then the biblical principle that we're going to dig out of this lesson is to, to know that the great faith requires refusal to compromise even in the face of deadly consequences. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Martin, Martin said, if you, you know, you got to stand for something. Oh, hallelujah. I can't quote him completely like that, but it just comes to my mind since this is the Martin Luther King birthday celebration weekend. And then our daily application for this lesson to identify circumstances or issues that require a response of bold faith. And so as we look at this lesson this morning, we're going to break it down into three parts. Furious heat turned up. Furious heat turned up. And we're going to start at verse 19 to, to verse 21 of Daniel chapter 3. And then we're going to look at faith in the fire. That's verses 12, uh, uh-oh, I got it wrong, verses 22 to 25. And then uh, finally, we're going to look at faithfulness got them out. Faithfulness got them out. And, and this is interesting, you know, because like I said, we're talking about this bold faith, this bold faith. Many times in our lives, uh, we have to deal with trials. And, and, and when we talk about trials, uh, we, we think of, of, of a court situation where, where someone has been brought to trial and, and they are standing in front of the judge. They are standing in front of a jury. And, and there is a decision that has to be made and there is a trial to figure out what is true and what is false. What 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 the person is going to be charged with, or what the person is going to be, re or how the person is going to be released, and so all of these facts and stuff comes out at the trial, and then the decision is made. Well, in in our lives, we also have trials, not in the legal sense, but trials of our faith, the trying of our faith, and the trying of our faith is is to prove. To, to each one of us that 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 we are faithful to God and that God most definitely is faithful to us so that those facts will come out into our heart. Sometimes it starts off with little bitty things and then it builds up our faith. I think of Daniel when he talked about the fact when he got ready to not Daniel but uh uh, uh David when he got ready to to fight uh, uh, Goliath. He he told he told King Saul, "Look, man, I I didn't fall the lion. I didn't fall the bear. And, and 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 my God delivered me from them. So when I go into my faith file, I see that that, that I have passed the test and fighting off and protecting the sheep. So this un, uncircumcised Philistine named Goliath means nothing. I'm going to fight him myself." Oh, hallelujah. Thank God that he does things to help us build our faith. He allows trials and tribulations to come to build up our faith that we might have a bold faith in him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so we have to learn as we going through our day-to-day -day things in life, that no matter how small the trial is, no matter how small the test is, that, that, that we have to operate in faith and believe that God will make a way out of no way and trust and lean on him. I always like to tell the story of faith because I'm a pretty big guy and, and as a big man, I can't sit in every chair. I just can't sit in every chair. If I go and sit in a chair, I got to know that that chair is going to hold my weight. And so I've learned over the years, I've tested chairs. So them little flimsy little lawn chairs, you ain't going to get me to sit in them lawn chairs. Because <laughs> boy, that chair can't hold my weight. But you put me in one of them steel chairs, I sit in that steel lawn chair because it can hold my weight. And I've learned that even with God. Man can't hold my weight. Man can't deal with everything that I go through. But God, he can hold my weight. And I can put all my weight on my Lord. I can lean and depend on him. Oh, glory, hallelujah. If you don't get nothing else from this lesson right now, that right there you need to grab a hold of, that you can lean 
and depend upon God. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. The background, the background, and I'm, I had to get that little introduction. The background of this lesson is, is, is very powerful. Background of this lesson is very powerful. And I'm I'm gonna try to try to keep it keep it simple here. Uh uh uh, we know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and also David were captured um, when the Babylonians came in and invaded Judah. And so now they have become the servants of King Nebuchadnezzar. And they went through some stuff to become king, uh, uh, I mean, become good servants of Nebuchadnezzar. And one of the things that happened was Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and only David and all of his kingdom could could, could uh, interpret that dream. Matter of fact, if no one interpreted the dream, Nebuchadnezzar had plans to kill all the wise men of, of Babylonian, which included David and, and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro. Yeah, yeah, they were gonna get all gonna get killed. And so, so God blessed David. Excuse me. God bless Daniel. Excuse me to 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 be able to interpret the dream, and the dream was about uh, how the kingdom Nebuchadnezzar kingdom was going to be great, but then after him it was going to be a separate kingdom, you know, and all that kind of stuff, and and you know it, go, it got into a whole lot of details, and so Nebuchadnezzar in turn made a statue. He made a statue based on that interpretation of that dream. And he said that everybody had to come and worship at that statue. When they heard the sound of the trumpet, everybody supposed to bow down on their knees and worship. And so some of the people got upset because when Daniel interpreted that dream, Nebuchadnezzar blessed him and blessed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and gave them a very high position. And these other wise men were jealous and envious. And so they 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 said, Well, well, we can't get Daniel because Daniel is too close. We're gonna get Daniel's friends. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. Sometimes, sometimes we get into trouble, we get into try the trying of our faith. Because we are around people who have great faith. Yeah, 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 yeah. You stick around me and, and your faith got to be strong because I got some strong faith. And there's some folks out there that's always hating on me, trying to get at me. And that's why when we, we pray, as, as brothers and sisters, we got to pray for everybody in our inner circle and those around us that they might also be protected like we are protected. And so here it is. The haters came to King Nebuchadnezzar and told King Nebuchadnezzar that, that, that them, them three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, they don't want to praise the God that you have lifted up in this statue. And so when, they, when, they, when he said all of that, that made the king furious. He, 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 he was so furious he, he, the, that he, he got upset, he got mad, and, and, and he was enraged because he believed that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had rejected him. And not only did he, did he get, get enraged because they had in, uh, rejected him, that he felt so disrespected. And so... He called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to him and, and asked him, why, why won't they get down and worship this God, this golden image that they had put together? And so in verse 17, he says, if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us and will deliver us from the hands of from your hands, O king, but if he if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. Yeah. 
they stood their ground. They stood their ground and, and let them know, look, I don't care what image you putting up, we're not going to worship him. And, 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 we, and if you want to kill us, go ahead on. Because no matter what you do to us, we're going to serve our God. Oh, hallelujah. If we had people like that today, because we know that, 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 that in this political arena that we're going in, oh, yeah, I'm going there today. In this political arena that we're going in today, we got people who, who are honoring a president who spoke vile and racist words. And yet, you got one man that says, yeah, he said it. You got another man that was in the room said, well, I talked to him privately. Then you got another couple of guys who won't even say a word. They've been silent ever since it happened. Then we got another two that say, well, I don't recall. How you don't recall? Yeah, these people are not taking a stand because they're worried about the king putting them into the fire. They're worried about the president putting them into the fire. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Somebody got to take a stand. What he said was wrong. What he said was wrong. And, and that which he's going to do behind what he says is even more wrong than what he said. Oh, I just had to go there this morning because I, 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 I'm, I, I'm usually silent about what's going on in the political realm because it has no theological basis for me to even deal with. But this one does. Because even in this story, we're looking at some, some immigrants, people who were brought in to Babylon, to the Babylonian kingdom. And, and, and they were, they raised from, from being at the lowest state and they raised to the highest state in the kingdom. But those who were already in the Babylonian kingdom were jealous and upset. And tried to find a way to take them out. Oh yes, I. And you say, boy, you are all over this lesson today. Yes, I am. I had, I had to go there this morning. But let's get to deeper, deeper into the lesson. So it says that in verse seven. I mean, verse nineteen. He says, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego. Yeah, the king was ticked off. His face was purple with anger, and he wanted to cut off Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so it says that that, that he, 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 he told the folks, he said, look, this is what I want y'all to do. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was heated usually. Yes. He ordered that furnace fire to be seven times hotter than it is usually. Now, I don't know if you've ever, and I guess everybody has, when you cooking something like a roast or chicken or turkey or whatever, and you got it in the oven, and you open up that oven, and that heat rush at you. Y'all barbecuing, and, and, and you got your ribs on, and, and, you, and your hot dogs, brisket, chicken, hamburgers, and all of that stuff, and you open up that 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 that, that, that barbecue pit, and that, that heat just rush out at you. And look at this heat now. It is seven times hot. The heat was turned up because of the fury, the anger of King Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 20 says, and he commanded certain mighty men of valor who was in his armies to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the fiery furnace. They were bound, 
hand and foot, fully dressed from head to toe. Have mercy. These men, then these men, verse 21, bound them in their coats and their trousers and their turbans and their other garments and were cast in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Oh, have mercy. They were cast into this hot fire. Mm, mm, mm. Now, what is interesting, in verse 22, it says, while they were in that fire, therefore, because the king had, had commanded, commandment was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot, the flames of the fire killed those who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. Mm, mm, mm. God is awesome. God is awesome. That these men went into that fire because they took a stand. And they're saying people that bound them up, that put, put the ropes on them and, and put the bonds on them. And threw them into the fire. Those same folks were killed first. Yeah. If you dig one hole to get somebody else in, you better dig two. Because you're going to need one yourself. We got to watch out for, for, for being, being around haters and, and people who are envious and jealous. We, we, we got to watch out. That, that we're not caught up in that and just following somebody's order. We got to do what is right. Take a stand for what is right. Even though when we take that stand, we might have to face dire consequences. But we ought to do what is right. I'd rather obey God than man. Oh, hallelujah. So, so, so this was the furious he turned up on these three Hebrew boys by Nebuchadnezzar. Next, we're going to talk about the faith in the fire. The faith in the fire. They had faith before they got into the fire. When they told Nebuchadnezzar in the first place, you know, the God whom we say serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. Yes, he's able to deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known, O king that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. They already had bold faith before they got into the fire. And now that they're in the fire, their faith is even stronger. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. Listen, 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 listen to verse 23. Listen to verse 23. He says, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. The miracle just happened. Did you miss it? What was the miracle? First of all, the men who put them in the fire were killed. But now they're in the fire. And all they could do is fall down bound in the midst of it. Oh, hallelujah. God had already made the miracle by letting him go into the fire. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody right now. Because you're going through a fire. You're going through a fire, uh, going through a faith trial in your life. And you're wondering God, why? Why me? Why I got to go through all of this? It's because you got a bold faith. And God's not going to put more on you than you can bear. Because he will always make a way of escape. 
You got to hold on to your faith. The faith you had when everything was going good, that same faith that you had last time you went through all those trials and tribulations, that same faith, that bold faith you have will work still today. You got to trust God. Lean on him and depend on him. So here they were in the middle of the fire. And verse 24 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. And he rose and spoke and said to his counselors, Did we not cast three men into the fire, bound in the midst of the fire. And the council said, yes, king, true old king. And he looked and he said, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Oh, hallelujah. I told you, Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll stick closer to you than any brother, especially when we're going through the trial of our faith, when we're in the fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar looked right into that fire. And when he looked into that fire, he saw the fact that, 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 that those three men who he had bound, who fell in that fire bound, was now walking around unbound and unchained in the fire. Oh boy. This is why so many of us love this story. Because we done been through some stuff. And when you done been through some stuff. And you knew. That there was going to be some problems. Some situations that you, you knew you couldn't get out of. But God. Was right there with you. Every step of the way. And Nebuchadnezzar. Who had made that decree who allowed this to happen because he took counsel from the haters. Mercy. He said, look, it's four men in there, loose and walking in the midst of the fire. They're freely walking around in the fire. Uh, let me say this. Let me say this. Put this in practical sense. Many of us are at jobs or in school situations or even church situations that we're going through trials that are testing our faith. Many of us, even in our own homes, are going through fires that are testing our faith. But we have the faith to even be free, even in the midst of a fiery furnace. Oh, hallelujah. We have the faith to be free, even in the midst of a fiery furnace. Oh, hallelujah. Because in that fiery furnace, the truth, has set you free. What's the truth? That Jesus says, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. I'll walk with you. I'll talk with you. He said, I'm right here with you, and you more than a conqueror in me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
So, here it is. They had faith in the midst of the fire. You remember, you remember, you remember when 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 Paul, uh, uh, not Paul, but uh, uh, Peter, and and the other disciples were in the boat, and and and, and then Peter saw Jesus coming, walking on the water. And Peter, Peter hollered out to the Lord, Lord, if that's really you, bid me to walk out there. And, and Peter, Peter was bold enough to walk out there towards God, walk out there towards Jesus. But it says he took his eye off of Jesus. He took his focus off of Jesus and started looking at the problem. I started looking at the solution because Jesus is always the answer. And it says when he did that, he fell into the water and he had to humble, excuse me, Jesus, help me. And Jesus picked him up and took him on to the boat. These men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these three Hebrew boys, never got distracted. They knew they were in the fire. They saw the flames. They smelled the smoke. But their faith in the fire was sure. They could lean and put all their weight in Jesus. They trusted him. They trusted their faith and they trusted in Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We don't hear them saying a word. No words are recorded what they said in that fight. You know, I, 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 I'm not going to even go there. I, I sit there. They, they, I think they was having, I got to go there. They, they were probably having a praise party. Yeah, they were probably dancing in the fire. Because Jesus showed up and they just gave him all the praise, all the glory. They worshiped him. They, they had a good time in the fire. Why don't we have a good time in the fire? By giving God praise and worship. Why do we got to go around moaning and groaning? Don't, don't forget, God is able. To do it seemingly and abundantly. Above all, we can act or think according to the power that worketh work in us through Christ Jesus. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to the end of the lesson. End of the lesson. We talked about the furious heat turned up on these Men, these boys, we talked about their faith in the fire. And then now let's talk about their faithfulness. Faithfulness got them out. Faithfulness got them out. Verse 26. And it reads, Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And, their, and the straps, the administrators, the governors, and the king's council gathered together, and they saw these men whose body the fire had no power. The hair on their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire or the smell of folk, uh, smoke was not even on them. And Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who, 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 who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word 
and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own. Oh, hallelujah. Faithfulness got them out of the fire. Their faithfulness in God, their trust in God got them out of the fire. God's faithfulness to them and his faithfulness to us got them out of the fire. We got to be faithful because God is always faithful and he will get us out of the fire. He will be with us in the fire. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God for being so faithful. We ought to be faithful to him. The old songwriter says, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to trust and obey. What a wonderful and glorious lesson. Hallelujah. And so, here are the thoughts to ponder for this lesson. Bold faith may require refusal to compromise even in the face of deadly consequences. Number two, the fire persecution can be very intense for those who choose to put their trust in the true and living God. Number three, God promises to always be with us and never to leave us. Number four, we can be witnesses to others of God's awesome power. Oh, have mercy. We, sh we don't never, I, I gotta say, we should not, we don't ever. Those of us who believe in the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those who put our trust in. We don't never look like what we're going through. We don't never look like what we've been through. Because he has a way of preserving us. And keeping us. Even in the fire. Number five. Let your light show shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let your light shine, y'all. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, I'm going to let it shine. Let your light shine. That people can see what God has done in you and through you by your bold faith. That he, that God himself, might be glorified. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for always being with us, helping us to be bold and to share our faith with others. In Jesus' name, amen. The thought to remember for this lesson is our Father never, ever abandons us. Before we close this lesson, we like to give those that are listening now and listening in the future an opportunity to give your life to Christ. To give your life to Jesus so that you can have this bold faith like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, to get this kind of bold faith, you got to start off with just having simple faith in Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection. If you just confess
confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And you on the road of faith, and that faith will take you all the way to heaven. So pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. We pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart. You are now saved. And I just encourage you to find a local body of Bible uh, teaching, God-believing people that you can fellowship with and that they can help you grow in your faith, that you might have a bold faith in Jesus. Facebook, we're going to sign off right now, and we're going to be on Get them radio blog talk. You can come and talk with us and share with us. The number is 619-639-4733. 619-639-4733. Facebook, have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week. And again, happy birthday to Martin Luther King Sr., a man with bold faith who stood for something. He said, I had a dream. Oh, hallelujah. And we hope one day that dream will come true.